Welcome back. We're going to finish up our on the ball and on the floor and using balls to help release fascia and trigger points uh, or particularly feet. Our feet carry us through the world and we should love our feet. And I hope you will start to ponder how important they are and take better care of them. We did the arm stretches on the wall and the uh, uh, wall stretch, which is very good for hamstrings. And we did some of the balls on the wall. Uh, another fun thing to use are the big, large um, yoga balls. And we don't happen to have one here, but uh, they have pretty good instructions in them. And I believe they're part of the kits that are here that you can also check out. I think we talked about that the very first week we got together. I did mention that um, there's a nice technique for releasing a stuck hip. Um, Doug Keller, an incredible Iyengar yogi person, uh, showed me this and it works. You can use a step or you can use a block, something firm. Cork blocks may be a little bit better than these foam blocks for this. And uh, something to hold on to, the wall or a chair so that you're being safe. Uh, and if you slip, you're not slipping very far. So anyway, it doesn't take a whole lot of distance because you want to tend to stand like this where you get this oblique angle in the hip. The work is pulling it up and that's a lot of work. So just this exercise is quite nice in creating stability in the, um, for the wall that I wanted you to see that you can use a chair as well in the, the hip area. So strengthening some of those maybe over loose ligaments. And sometimes you ever step off a curb and you jam your hip up and your back wants to go out. This is just a nice way to help release the greater trochanter out of the head of the femur. So it, and then just a gentle swinging. But we're keeping the hips parallel and then just flicking the leg a little bit. You can do it on both sides and then come back to the side that tends to be giving you the most dilemma. So that is a nice exercise just for helping expand the hip. We also talked about using the balls on the feet. And I have two little half balls that are harder rubber that are pretty amazing too. And you just work it along the arch. You're gonna feel some spots here. It's always nice to have something stable to hold on to. And take a few minutes to do this. Shelby was sharing that they had physical therapy for some feet issues of working and standing on their feet too long. And this was, you can go pay a physical therapist to do this do it yourself as a part of your self-care two or three times a week. You can roll it. You'll, you'll feel some funny spots in there. And you can press gently. This is really good for plantar fasciitis. And it's really good for neuromas. As well as the flossing that we're going to do in a few moments. Don't push too hard. Also a frozen water bottle. Shelby, I don't know if you've ever tried that. Yes, they have. See, you can be your own physical therapist, but we have some great ones in Athens as well as DOs, chiropractors, other folks who can help you get your body back when you need it. So this is just a nice technique and I encourage you to scream along with me because <laughs> I feel, oh, it feels good, especially if you have high arches. This is just a nice way to give it a little attention. Excellent. We're going to take the balls. Probably forgetting something I want to do. Oh, I wanted to just demonstrate that you can do this in a chair as well. If that's just too much pressure, or I'm watching a movie, or I'm visiting friends, and this is just a good way to work it out and a safe way if you have some balance issues. Oh, that feels good. It really does. So I encourage you to pay attention to your feet and to adopt a pair of balls. 
So we're going to take these bowls. Uh, we're going to have two different types of shavasana today, too, when we get to that. Down to the floor. This is really a 20-minute uh, ironing out of the fascia. And yes, believe it or not, you can get certified in yoga with the balls. You can get certified in a thousand different kind of yoga things these days. But good old common sense, and I'm going to switch my hair direct. So I'm not squishing it into the back of my head. You can, this is a really my fascia technique that I think you'll have adopted. Some folks may need a little lift for the head. Some folks may not. But generally starting, I like to start. You can start at the top or the bottom. You can use a foam roller to also work on this. But roll the backs of those ankles. You can roll up one side and then down the other. Find the IT areas. Oh, mercy sakes. There's some spots. <laughs> Still keeping things in good alignment. Find a spot and hold. You can rest with the ball somewhere on the other side. The more pressure you put on it, the more you're going to feel that pressure point. And I know you all love this, so find those spots. And keep working through. So come up the outside of the leg, the inside of the leg, a little trickier to get to, but with a foam roller, you can do a lot of work on the quads, and we'll get to the quads. Just keep finding the spot. And then when you get there, hang out. Again, fascia needs a few minutes to feel safe enough uh, to release. Well, I don't know if fascia actually has the feeling of safety, but it sure can resist a lot of pounds per square inch. This is also going to be good for working through circulation issues, restless legs, and lymphatic issues. So I'm adding a little extra pressure here and just holding. And I'm going to roll on. Oh, yes, there's some spots. And you know, you can have some pillows, some extra blocks here for support. You can play with a modified pigeon while you're doing this. So you're getting a few different stretches while you're ah, torturing yourself with the ball. <laughs> Oh, there's a spot. Yeah, everybody has them. That's why most of the people in my class, when I hand out the balls, go, oh, no. and I'm going, yes. And they usually adopt, adapt to it and come out for the better. So keep moving up. Keep moving up. And then you're going to come all the way. The calves can be very tender to some people. Some people will prefer uh, the foam roller to this, but I like the balls. This is nice. This is flossing the nerve train and the fascia train. Move it down to another spot. And you'll, you'll feel it, and you'll get results. Uh, you can have the balls in a, a sock and tie them together when you want to work two sides of a small muscle. That way they don't go flying apart. Quite nice. Oh, yeah. The gastronemius and soleus, those hold a lot of tension and affect the feet. And work it up. You're working it up. Usually one ball behind the knee is sufficient. I like to put the balls under the knee during Shavasana if I don't have my legs up the wall. But floss that muscle train, floss that fascia train, and then rest, and then ponder, and then move it up a little bit more. Again, you can do both sides at one time. 
read a book. This actually feels very good. You can add a gentle motion to it until you get the right spot. And then hang out. You can do a few other twists while you're waiting. Move it all the way up. A little posse won't nice in there while you're waiting. And get right into the head of the hamstrings eventually. Be cautious here. You're not wanting to detach anything, but you want to let them know that, oh, they can let go. And this is a great way to create more awareness, more blood flow, more detoxification for this region. Oh, there's a spot. Mm -hmm. Making noises also helps. Then you're going to lay back and you're going to take the ball on under the buttocks and it'll be a whole new experience. <laughs> You'll find all sorts of new places. You can do some of your hip gentle rocking, hydrating and lubricating the hip joint. And then when you find a spot, hang out. Put a little extra pressure by using body weight. This is extremely effective. Three different gluteus muscles, attachments of the piriformis in there. Oh, and where you're resisting, back off. Breathe. Learn to let go into it. I let go, and many of us have a very difficult time letting go. And as you continue to let go, you can play around with or move around that uh, trigger point or uh, pressure point. There, finally, let go, let go. I let go. And it will take two to five minutes if you have quite cross links of the fascia or a, a knotted, twisted mass of fascia, i.e. a trigger point, Ugh. or where different muscle groups come together and there's a lot of fascia around that. Again, working side to side, coming out over to the hips. And if you did this just once or twice a week or five, 10 minutes before you go to bed, you will sleep so much better. And I can roll completely onto the ball, supporting the weight of the legs with the arms. And Get in as deep as I want, or as protective as I need. And these are some pretty significant spots here. I'm trying to be brave for the video. And then roll onto both sides as I did this side, do that side. Watch the clothing tends to get caught up. Try to find the line of the iliac crest, those big hip bones, the big Mickey Mouse ears. And gently work it across there. You can now have it in the sock if you want to get right into the dimples or the divots to, uh, on either side of the PSIS, posterior uh, SI joint. And you can do different movements with the legs. But find a spot where you can hold. Where the, oh, there's one right there. Few breaths. Again, you can point and flex the feet. Do whatever you need to keep yourself entertained. And then work up the spine. 
and continue to work up the spine. Eventually, you can drop the hips carefully to the earth. You're not on the spinous processes here. You're on the muscle tissue on either side of the spine. Multifidus, the erector spinae. You can even get really deep in there if you could relax into it. The QL, quadratus lumboris, which is the deepest one of the deepest, biggest muscles in the body, and it pulls the lower body to the upper body. And if it's tight, you can do all sorts of interesting things to your uh, hips. It can really affect them. And you just keep moving up. I'm liking this a lot. This is a tough yoga practice. You're not going to hurt anything. You're not going to hurt the kidneys. You're not jamming them into there. You might even activate the adrenal glands or create a little calmness of the adrenal glands by giving them a little massage sitting on top of the kidneys. And keep moving up, up, up. You'll notice you'll start to get that opening of the chest, the relaxing of the shoulders. Now, oh, I just remembered two that I wanted to show you standing, so I might have to go back to standing on the wall because it's incredible for the pecs and the deltoids, which are very hard to get to. And then you just kind of have to get to the spots. You'll find them. Wiggle it around a little bit. And I'm going to roll off gently to the side to be able to adjust the balls here. The scapulas have a few different trigger points on them. If you have shoulder issues, if you can get this ball correctly on the scapula, it takes a little wiggling. <laughs> there we go. Oh, yeah. This is about the wall activity I was going to show you. And this is tough because you'll get a spot and it, it is, you'll, you'll know it. And then try to support the head. And I'm up a little high, but there's two or three spots here. And if you can work them, slide it off. You can release a lot of shoulder issues. Uh, as long as there's no tear, you can really do a lot of good here. Mm. And underneath and between the scapula, around the way, ooh, ooh, ooh. the upper thoracic spine, and play with the arm motion. Good areas. Oh, yes. And eventually, doing that on both sides. And here's where, in a sock, it's quite nice, or on some non slip surface. But you end up if the, the occiput. A little arch. Sometimes folks will want one ball there. You're gonna have two balls under your knees and this at the still point. You can roll it around a little bit. You might hear some crinkling and crackling. Will definitely mess up your hair, do you? <laughs> Never a problem for me. This can bring you right back into your body. Help elicit the stress response. Lengthen that lumbar sacral area away. Knees together, feet apart. The true relaxation pose is so as or soft here. Pretty nice place to be. And you deserve it. 
So again, rolling off of these things gently, coming up with the head is the last thing that comes up. Since I'm here, I'll show you another arm opener, and then we'll check our time to see if we go back to the wall for more fun ball work. But roll those around. Explore, find the spots, and hang out on them. You can actually, what we were going to do on the wall, we're going to, we could do on the pecs here on the ground, but it will be hard to get the pecs unless you had a bigger ball. But if you use a block, and you might need to adjust or do one at a time, the pecs are this muscle above the breasts here. And it gets very tight, and it's kind of painful. So you can try it on a block. Oh, yeah. You can try it on the ground. If you can get, again, like I said, need a bigger ball for that, or fold your mat up a little. Run it along the collarbone. And it is quite a release. I do the wall for mine, and I have a little more control for that. And it is great for helping drain the lymph and opening the shoulders, opening the heart center. Another way to help open the armpits and to reverse that kyphotic curve uh, here up in the upper thoracic region or the cervical spine is to use blocks and you can use different sizes of blocks. The head is going to go down in between. You're getting your forearms here about shoulder width apart. You have glasses on, generally best to take them off. And put your hands into prayer position. And then start inching the body away. You can see that it's a big stretch for the armpits. Pretty safe. Here's some pressure here in prayer position, pushing together. Couple minutes here. If you don't have shoulder issues, if you want to try a bigger block, you can do this again on a larger block. And I'm just simulating one block because I don't have the other block with me. But you would again, maybe two blocks will be the same. Nope, a little different, right? Better to be symmetrical here. But it's a great stretch. larger blocks. I think you will feel amazing. Well, since we're here, and I'm too lazy to get back up, we could do a couple um, Muchanasanas and Cobra Pose, which is also, or Sphinx. So you're pulling down, and usually it would be on the mat, not on the blanket, but as long as you have some resistance. Sphinx Pose, you're pulling up out of the pelvic bowl. You're dragging the scapulas down the back. You're looking around like the sphinx in the big valley. Uh, and each of yes. And hold it for a few moments. Bhujanasana cobra pose. If you need something to put your forehead, that's fine to use a mat or a blanket here. Fingertips come to underneath the armpits and my elbows reach back down and long. My heels curl together. I prefer my toes up, I don't know why. The pose is with the toes down. The, everything is activated. So the heels curl together, the elbows are drawing down. I engage the glutes, I tip my pubis up and in, and you lift up and down. Resting up, and it's my torso.
torso and doing the work, not my arms. You can come up without the hands. And that's great work for the abdominals as well. And down, rotate the head to either side. Just for a little stretch of the neck. And you can hold Bhujanasana for a few minutes. And then come down to rest. That's a lot of work. It's a great pose. Um, and you can make friends with your spine. You'll have a nice, beautiful so to end in a lovely shavasana, you can do legs up the wall. Or again, if you have your chair and you are having back aches, let's do it this way. This is a very supportive corpse pose. If there's a rough edge, you can put a blanket over it. Don't really need one. I'm going to put this here to demonstrate legs up the wall one last time. Your Prina Karani or this chair version of it. And you just sit to the side of the chair. Again, you would have your blanket and your mat going this way. And you gently roll up. You walk your torso in. And you're at this nice 90 degrees. And you can just let go. Softens the psoas. So it's very similar to true relaxation pose, and it allows the sacrum to widen and relax. If you're on a sticky mat and it's a safe area, you can do a few bridges here, or modified shoulder stance. This is lovely. I can hold on to the chair for support. And down. Uh, and come into Shavasana. Add your breath work here. Your four, seven, nine breath, or whatever numbers you use, or whatever breath you prefer. And again, legs up the wall. Some people prefer a blanket, other people do not, and you can Again, do, I'm going to do it without, so that if I do a few bridges, it won't be in my way. And it's easier to sit close to the wall, so as you roll up, you don't have so far to go. Just scratch it in. And then you can do it. And you just relax. You're going to bring a curve Get those scapulas as flat on the earth as you can. You can slide the feet down and pull the hips up. Arms up so you're pulling down with the feet and up with the, the buttocks. Activating the thyroid, parathyroid here. And so you can do a few fun little bridges. Massaging the spine, and then Shavasana. I don't know of many contraindications to this pose. Walk your feet over to the side and come up. But if you had low blood pressure, if you had some particular heart issues that you might need to discuss with your physician or your healthcare practitioner for having pieces and parts of the body above the heart, then um, ask them. But for now, I'm very grateful that we've been able to share this time together. And I would love to hear back from folks. So respond on the website or write your library and let them know or pop in and talk to them at the front desk. They're open. Uh, masks are uh, a standard right now still. And we'll see what we can do for more yoga, more community-based wellness activities 
in 2022. Can you believe that? So again, special thanks to Shelby, special thanks to the library, and special thanks to you for joining